This is Professor L. B. Gaikwad's English Literature Web. I am Professor L. B. Gaikwad is teaching today the topic Para Language. This is my lecture 325 and part first. Before going to the topic, I will request you to watch, like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel. Again, I will request you to see all the notes I have put in the description box. Now we will go to the topic. The para language tells the non-lexical components of communication. So remember here today we are discussing the para language. The para language means the non-lexical uh, components it means that the components which are without words, phrases and morphology means there is no any kind of inclusion of the words, phrases, sentences and morphemes. And without all these words, phrases and morphemes, the communication happens and that, that is called the para language. They are means the Lexical components are, it means they are intonation. Intonation is the particular, I will say, concept in which there is the rise and fall. Falling and rising tone is there, that is the intonation. Pitch, pitch is there, means there is the rise and fall of the speech, that is the uh, pitch. And speed of the speaking means the speaker speaks at some level. It is the speed of his talking that is called also the particular, I will say, the paralanguage systems. Then hesitation noises. When actually man is in the hesitation, psychologically that man goes through the noises and such hesitation noises are also there. Gestures means all the body postures, gestures, actions and movements also are there. And facial expressions are also there. Means all the facial expressions, the facial expression may be happy, may be unhappy, they may be satirical, they may be critical or they may be comic, all that. And in this way, all these are the particular I will say non-lexical components of the communication which is called the paralanguage. It shows our manner of speaking. Remember this paralanguage shows the manner of our speaking means how the speaker speaks, how his manner is, how slowly, how speedily he speaks that is the manner or how he uses the intonation, the pitch, the speed of his speaking, all these things, how he uh, takes there uh, for his support, that is called the manner of speaking and the manner of speaking comes there. For example, the pitch of our voice, the pitch of our voice, it means that the rise and fall of our voice, it means uh, we, uh, when uh, speak, then we of go up and we come down that is the rise and fall and such type of rise and fall is also there I will say and this point is there available in the linguistics. All these are the parts of non-verbal communication. Remember all these parts we have seen are the parts of the non-verbal communication. It means that there is no verbal communication, there is no need of speaking, there is no need of uh, uh, using our mouth, uh, that is called. And so non-verbal communication, this is the method of the non-verbal communication. There is no need of writing language more. A little bit language is needed there, but it is not necess necessary that we should write their language in the more quantity. When there is the language, that is the verbal communication. So here 
there is no need of the language and speaking language is done with their assistance it means that with the assistance of the gestures means the gestures are used there and in this way speaking language is done or the speaker speaks his particular language and when this speaker speaks the particular language he modifies the meaning actually the meaning which is there in front of him that meaning is modified by him that meaning is told very uh, nicely or in a different way by him and he, the emotions and the emotions are there and these emotions are also modified through pitch that is the rise and fall system volume volume is there and through this volume i will say tone the sound that is called the volume and intonation just we saw intonation means the particular way of going down and going up that is falling and rising falling rising rising and falling rising uh, and also kinetic tone is there so all these tones when come together that is called the intonation david abercrombie a scottish academician says that we converse means we do our conversation our discussion with our entire body while speaking means when we talk when we speak we use our entire body means the total body is used by us linguistic scholars have said that our communication is a big matter where words are limited means the words are used very limited words are not used there but if need is there then a little bit words are used there that is the point such knowledge is used to release our presentation more effectively remember with the help of all this knowledge means with the help of this para language our presentation becomes very effective and effectively we can deliver we can release our presentation the para language is a kind of meta communication that is a code that translates the words which we mean so remember the para language is the particular system that is called the meta communication <coughs> that is the code which translates the words which we mean I mean it means that according to our meanings means in what way we take those meanings in this way there is the translation of the words we speak the para language while gasping sighing clearing our hands throats changing our tone whispering or shouting emphasizing means emphasizing certain words waving hands uh, then uh, i will say showing dislike smiling laughing crying speaking means we can speak sometimes faster and we can uh, speak sometimes uh, in the slow motion that is the particular situations and on such situations i will say we speak the para language gasping means what when we control our breath that is the gasping sighing means when we release our breath clearing our throats means when we clear our throat changing our tone when we change our tone means when we uh, want to change our a tone then we uh, if we are uh, rising then we come to the falling tone that is at that situation also we use the para language then whispering is there shouting is there when there is the whispering when there is the shouting the uh, volume the pitch is rising there and that's why we use the para language there emphasizing certain words because certain words are there and we want to emphasize we want to stress them we want to 
uh, call them as important and that's why we emphasize such words and while emphasizing such words also we use this para language waving hands i will say then frowning frowning that is just we saw that showing dislike we use all these and smiling laughing or crying then speaking faster or uh, slower i will say or lower i will say so in such situation i will say the para language is used by these above postures we create emotional background and through all these postures we create the emotional background because uh, all these body postures are used only for our uh, emotional background means we come down we go up that is the emotional background for example if a man speaks the eulogy in the funeral function the wise breaks wait emotions and we also become emotional it means that when there is the person there is the situation or position or there is the program function or i will say there is the uh, particular funeral uh, process or the uh, funeral uh, time is there then that person expresses the eulogy and when he talks that eulogy when he speaks um, his words as eulogy then his wise comes down means his wise is affected there his wise is affected there and this is called the emotional situation this is para language situation if a man says sorry with lower and slower words with tears we know he has expressed sorry so remember when the gentleman uh, is suppose uh, uh, crying or suppose there are the tears in his eyes then we understand that oh this gentleman is expressing sorry so this is called the situation of the para language does crombi writes in his research paper internationally in 1968 that the para language refers to non linguistic elements Rem remember the uh, para para language is the particular system in which the non linguistic elements are used non linguistic means they are not linguistic they are non means they are related completely to the non verbal situation or body postures that is the point they are not related with the science of language means all these uh, i will say the science all these i will say the elements which are not uh, related with the science of language means linguistic they follow the rules of the body language and not the language which man speaks with mouth and writes with words and phrases that is language means all the rules of language which are i will say the language is spoken with mouth and the language is written with a pen so the pen or the mouth both are not used there the para language is used there it means that the body postures are used there that is the uh, main main thing i will say man knows more easily with body language than linguistic remember there is a difference uh, when we uh, speaks uh, when we speak with our mouth we cannot understand we cannot understand more when we write we cannot understand more but when we uh, talk with others with the body language then we can understand more than the linguistics so last point is conclusion and in this conclusion we will see the para language is a non phonemic i will say property means there is no uh, i will say relation of phonetics or phonemic or linguistic i will say it is an expansion of non verbal uh, communication i will say remember this is the expansion of the non verbal communication that emphasize or this method or these signs emphasize the visual communication and that happens the visual communication people use this communication in the whole day but it is 
not known to them that they are using the parallel language system. So they use all these systems with body, but they don't know that they are using this parallel language. So here today we have finished the topic parallel language. Again, we will be in front of each other with a new topic. Till then, thank you. Thank you very much.